Hi everybody, today we are going to discuss another important topic in industrial microbiology that is nothing but the production strain. So all of you know what is a production strain, right? So it is the strain which we are using for our industrial purpose or the fermentation uh, process. So this organism should possess some desirable characteristics to for a successful fermentation process. So in this session we are mainly going to concentrate on what are all the desirable characteristic a production strain should possess as well as what are all the different techniques available for the isolation of the production strain in that you will see there are two different techniques one is primary screening technique and the second one is secondary screening technique. So in the today's session we are mainly going to focus on primary screening technique. So before going to primary screening technique let us see what are all the important uh, features a production strain should possess, a desirable production strain should possess. So the first and foremost uh, uh, motto of an industry is high yield. So our production strain should be a high yielding strain, that is the first and from foremost criteria regarding to the product, uh, regarding to the production strain and it should not, uh, I, I mean it should have a stable biochemical characteristic. So in the fermentation process it may be a long process, it may be a 2 days process, or it may be a 21 days process, it all depends upon the type of the fermentation process. So throughout this fermentation process this production strain should possess the stable biochemical characteristics. Next important thing is it should not produce any undesirable substances. Many of the fermented products what we are using is for our eukaryotic, we are going to apply it in eukaryotic tissues. So it should not produce any toxic substances or undesirable substances that will harm the final target that is nothing but whoever is going to consume it. Another important thing is it should be easily cultivated in large scale because the fermentation process we have discussed in the previous classes that is it, it may be a small scale fermenter, it may be a large scale fermenter, I mean it may be a pilot fermenter, it may be a large scale fermenter. So it should be, I mean it should be easily cultivated in all these cases. So these are all the basic characteristic features a production strain should possess. So if you uh, just uh, have a look of this, so the what are all the characteristics which we have discussed, uh, one is it should be high yielding. It should be stable in biochemical characteristics that is what we discussed. It should not produce any undesirable substances and it should be easily cultivated on large scale. Okay? So these things, so these are all the basic parameters which makes your production strain as an apt fermenter, uh, fermentation organism for you. Okay. So coming to the screening techniques. So both the detection and isolation of high yielding species from the natural sources is called screening. Okay, so the basic definition of screening goes like this that is you are going to detect and you are going to isolate high yielding organism from the sources, natural sources. You know that depending upon the type of the organism you require you have to select a particular source. I told you in the previous class that is if you want to isolate a cellulose degrading organism select a soil, a select a garden soil or a forest soil so that the cellulose will be rich over there. So it depends upon the type of fermentation process you have to select a particular natural source and from there you have to detect it, you have to isolate it. So that particular process is called what? Screening process. So what is this, what is screening technique? It is nothing but detection and isolation of high yielding species from the natural sources which is called what? The screening process. So industrially if you see screening process, you can classify screening process into two categories. One is primary screening and the second one is what? Secondary screening. Okay, so there are two uh, types of screening, one is primary screening and the next one is what? The secondary screening. So what, what is the meaning of primary screening? It is the initial step of screening process or it is the initial isolation process. So in the primary screening, uh, uh, there will be detection and isolation as I have discussed uh, of the desired organism based on its quantitative, sorry, qualitative ability to produce the desired product like antibiotic, amino acid, growth factors, enzymes, etc. Okay. So, it is a primary screening, it is nothing but the detection and isolation of desired microorganism based on its uh, uh, qualitative ability to produce your desired product. Okay. It is the initial stage, you are going to detect and isolate, these are the two important aspects which you are going to cover in the primary screening technique. So what do you mean by secondary screening? You have isolated an organism which is having the capacity to produce your desired product. Therefore, you have to go for formalization that is you have to find out what are all the important uh, sources which you have to provide for the growth and multiplication of this organism to produce your desired product. So in secondary screening there are various nutrients that are provided for the growth are tested for toxicity. 
why you want to test uh, test that so that any nutrient component that is toxic to the growth of isolated strain should be eliminated so it is nothing but a media formulation type of things that is you are what are all the components can be given what should not be given what should be added what should be mixed with what all these formulations you will be carrying out in the secondary screen, uh, screening okay so in, in the secondary screening you will be always uh, also checking what the chemical solubility of the product produced okay so the major thing is primary screening is nothing but isolation and detection secondary screening is, screening is nothing but the formulation of the media and elimination of the toxic materials all those things will come under the secondary screening technique okay right so coming to the screening i just told you the screening can be classified you can just look at the this slide the screening can be classified into two primary screening and secondary screening i just told you we are mainly concentrating on primary screening technique so in the primary screening technique you can screen the organic acid producing microorganism okay so there is a specific technique for that that is nothing but using indicator dyes you can uh, you can screen this type of organisms then antibiotic producing organism one among the most uh, popular method which is used is nothing but crowded plate technique we are going to discuss each and everything now and uh, uh, some extracellular metabolites if you want to check uh, then you can go for axonographic technique uh, and you will be having enrichment culture technique that is mainly by modifying your media you can isolate specific group of microorganism by eliminating uh, and some other class of microorganisms so totally we are going to uh, see four different techniques under primary screening okay so i told you what is primary screening what is primary screening it is nothing but detection and isolation we will see one by one what are, what are the different uh, uh, techniques so the first technique which you are going to see is nothing but a crowded plate technique okay so crowded plate technique it is mainly used uh, we have seen in the previous slide that is it is mainly used for what for the antibiotic produce isolation of the antibiotic producing organisms okay it's a very simplest technique and how we will be doing is uh, uh, you have to select a soil sample definitely the soil sample uh, we are selecting because it is a heterogeneous source of what microorganism so you are going to take uh, take the soil sample obviously the soil sample will be containing n number of organism we don't want all those organism we want to want to have a uh, handful of organism for that you will be going for serial dilution you know that what is the function of the serial dilution it is nothing but reducing the microbial load then after that you are going to plate each dilution into a nutrient media okay so once you once you transfer it into nutrient media you will be getting colonies so you have to select the plates which is having 200 to 300 microbes so it is easy for screening that's why we have to select for this group of organism and this the number of organism that is around 200 to 300 number of microorganism plates you are going to select it okay so when after that you have to go for a complete observation to locate any colony which is surrounded with a clear zone okay you are going to you can see uh, in this particular diagram that is there are it is a crowded plate technique there are different organisms are there in some group of organism you can see a clear zone okay so this clear zone is nothing but uh, the diffusion of some chemical compounds it may be definitely antibiotic most in the most uh, uh, probable cases that is this uh, will this is having the capacity to kill the organism which is vicinity to that particular organism okay so that uh, that particular colony you have to select so once you have selected that colony then you have to go for uh, i mean you have to pick up that particular colony and you have to subculture it so once you subculture once you are subcultured it is essential to screen it we don't know why it, it has been produced that particular zone it may be due to an antibiotic or it may be due to some other inhibitory components all those things to check that you have to go for a screening test okay so antibiotics why we want to use antibiotic this is used this is mainly used to treat some uh, diseases like some some pathogenic organisms so if it is producing antibiotic property towards any organism it does not have any value in, in the medical industry so that you have to screen it properly that is by using a particular test organism seed a particular test organism into the media then you see your test culture and observe for any sort of inhibition and find out what is the uh, inhibitory concentration that is how much uh, zone of inhibition it has been produced so based upon all those things you can just isolate this particular organism uh, uh, isolate this desired antibiotic producing organism so this is the ultimate aim of crowded plate technique that is isolating a desired antibiotic producing organism okay it's a very simple technique take the soil sample seal it dilute it 
platelet observe for any sort of uh, uh, zone of inhibition pick up that particular colony then subculture it after that you have to go for a screening test by using a test organism so that this is the initial stage i told you there are primary screening and secondary screening and this organism will be sub subjected for secondary screening later okay the next important technique is nothing but oxonographic technique it is mainly used to find out the growth factors producing organism vitamins uh, um, uh, I mean, I mean the growth factors uh, can be, I mean those organism which is having the capacity to produce growth factors like your amino acid or vitamin can be uh, screened by using uh, this oxonographic technique. So, this is a simple technique once again you can perform in the laboratory that is uh, you have to take a filter paper strip right and put the filter paper strip across the petit dish so that the two ends will should pass through the edge of the dish. I think you can imagine that you are taking a filter paper, you are cutting the filter paper, you are placing the filter paper into the, uh, the strip into the petri dish and the both the edges should cross what the petri plate. Okay. Then you have to cut a uh, filter paper which is exactly in the size of bottom of your petri plate. right? You have to keep that filter paper in the bottom of the petri plate. Now you have to prepare the nutrient agar media and uh, around 45 degrees centigrade you have to pour uh, this media into where into the uh, petri dish which you have already designed in which two components are there one is filter paper disc and uh, filter paper strip another one is paper, filter paper disc which is there in the uh, bottom. So, you are going to pour your nutrient media into that. You allow it for solidification and after that serially dilute your soil sample then uh, you transfer the sample into this particular media which you have already poured which is already solidified okay. by using a so simple spray plate technique you can just do it and uh, uh, then the uh, after, I mean you have to make ready the plate number 1 like this. So, you require two different plates. So, one is plate number 1 what you have prepared now with the filter paper discs. Now, what you have to do is you have to prepare a minimal media. Okay? A minimal media, what do you mean by minimal media? A media which lacks a certain components which is essential for the growth of the organism that is nothing but what mineral media mainly it will be your growth factors which will be absent over there such so I mean there are different kinds of minimal media. So, in this type of minimal media which you are mainly concentrating a media which lacks what the growth factors. So, that has to be prepared in a separate petri plate then after that you just cool it and pour it into the petri dish allow it for set ok. Then what you have to do is you have to remove the uh, first one that is the first petri plate uh, media which you have prepared that it is very easy to remove because you are already having a ribbon under this that is filter paper under this you have to just take out that uh, uh, media which is already seeded with your soil sample and then place it into the minimal media. Okay. So, it should be done very uh, done in an aseptic condition. So, you place it and you have to keep it for incubation. So, you have already seeded some organism in the top media that is wherever the filter paper which you have impregnated or it, it has been play, uh, plated. So, uh, that media contains what the microorganisms. So, the microorganism will grow after incubation time of 24 hours or 48 hours. So, once this is over what will happen? So, those organism which is having the capacity see uh, one more thing which I forgot to uh, mention here is your minimal media is seeded with some organism some test organism. So, this organism will grow only in the presence of what the growth factors, but your minimal media does not have the growth factors. Okay, So, the test organism is completely spreaded in the bottom media. So, during the incubation process what will happen is whatever the top media your soil sample is plated whichever the organism is having the capacity to produce the growth factor will diffuse into the media and it will go into the second media that is the media minimal media where in which your test organisms are seeded. Okay. So, wherever the diffusion is happened that area test organism will grow other area the test organism will not be grow. Are you getting this? So, whatever the organism which is there in the top which produces the growth factors. So, this growth factors will diffuse through the media and reaches into the minimal media. What is there in the minimal media? Your test organisms are present. This organism will, uh, will grow only in the presence of what the growth factors. So, whatever the organism which is producing the growth factor which is just above that particular microorganism which is there in the minimal media should be selected for what the further screening process. Hope you are clear with the what is oxenography. So, what you will be doing? 
a media which is prepared under that what is there the filter paper disc is there and filter paper strip is there you have serially diluted the organism and transferred there and you have prepared another media called minimum media where in which what is lacking your growth factors are lacking your test organisms are seeded so these organism will grow in only in the presence of what growth factor so now what you are going to do is you are going to carefully place the uh, media that is the first media into the minimal media and you are keeping it for incubation. So, uh, after a period of incubation what happens the organism will start growing in the uh, top surface that is in the normal media and it diffuses the uh, growth factors. So, wherever the growth factor is diffused that particular test organism will grow others will not grow and that colony has to be picked up and it has to, it has to be processed for the secondary screening for the protection of what growth factors or growth factor producing organisms. Okay, so, the next important technique which we are mainly concentrating on uh, uh, enrichment culture technique. So, what is this the enrichment culture, culture technique? So, it is uh, that is it is mainly I mean uh, this has been developed by Bajer Nick uh, uh, a soil microbiologist. Uh, so, a media or incubation conditions or incubation condition I mean in this particular technique what you are going to do is the media or incubation conditions are adjusted so as to favor the growth of desired microorganism ok it will favor only the desired organism to grow you are going to formulate the media in such a way that only your desired organism will grow there on the other hand the unwanted microorganisms are eliminated ok only the desired microorganism will be growing there ok this is one of the important technique uh, and uh, it is having a valuable tool in many screening programs. Uh, for the isolation or isolation of industrially important microorganisms that is it is just by using enriching your media enriching your enriching your media means you are going to modify your media in such a way that you are allowing only your desired organism not the unwanted organism so how you will be doing this what are all the, i mean what are all the steps you have to follow for this so you have to prepare the nutrient broth which is containing an unusual substrate okay so not a normal nu nutrient media an unusual substrate for example you are supplying only cellulose as a carbon source so those organism which is having the capacity to produce cellulose enzyme only will be growing in that okay such type of modified media you are going to prepare so what is the first step you are going to prepare a nutrient broth which containing which contains what an unusual substrate and which is inoculated with a microbial source means nothing but the soil ok you are going to inoculate this media with what a microbial source nothing but a soil you can use once again then after that you are incubating it and a small proportion of inoculum from the step 1 that is the step 1 what you have prepared after incubation a small proportion of the inoculum uh, should be transferred into the solid media ok only thing is the solid media also should have the same composition so that what will happen the next day the well isolated colonies will be appear Okay, what is the first step you are preparing a nutrient broth in that an unusual carbon source is given or unusual component is given and you are inoculating with your soil sample or a heterogeneous source whatever it is then after that you are incubating it so that the grow uh, the organism will grow over there a small proportion of this inoculum should be transferred it into what another agar media which 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 will have been same, same composition okay then after that the colonies will grow over there see those organism which is having the capacity to produce cellulose only cellulase enzyme only will grow there because the only principal carbon source which you, which you have provided is cellulose ok so the, this should be subcultured on a fresh media and they also should be subjected for further testing for your desired quality ok so you have isolated this organism uh, when I, I mean now uh, hope you are clear with what you are going to do so unusual component you are giving you are isolating the organism then you are subculturing it after that you are testing for the uh, quality of uh, your desired quality is present or not we will see one example like that so you uh, you are uh, which enzyme we can we can take an ex enzyme which uh, that is the microorganism which can produce uh, protease enzyme ok just for an example I am uh, explaining here so for that you are going to take the sam sample whichever the apt sample we are going to take and you are going to serially dilute it after serially diluting you are going to heat it with 80 degree centigrade so at particular 80 degree centigrade after serial dilution what will happen most of the vegetative cells will be uh, removed and what will be remaining there the spores will be remained 
Okay, so I want an enzyme that is protease enzyme. We know that the spore forming organism having the capacity to produce what more amount of the protease enzymes. I mean, many organism has, but if you see the spore forming organism, the capacity is much much higher. That's why we are going to heat it for 80 degrees centigrade. Therefore, all the vegetative cells will be uh, removed. Only the spores will be there. Then you have you have to plate this particular sample into the media. Okay, so the media is I which enzyme I told you. Um, Protease enzyme. So, protease enzyme. So, we will be taking a media, media which contains whatever uh, protein rich sample like a casein. Okay, I am giving casein as what the major uh, carbon source over there. Okay, so those organism which is having the capacity to uh, grow in the casein plate has to produce what protease enzyme. So, you can see the colonies will be surrounded by a clear zone. Okay, because casein would have hydrolyzed because of the production of what the protease enzyme. So, now I understood that the organism which I have isolated is having the capacity to produce what protease. Then later steps secondary screening you have to go for, you have to go for uh, uh, strain improvement all those things which we have discussed uh, in the previous class how to do a strain improvement process. Okay, so this is how the enrichment culture technique uh, uh, can be followed or enrichment technique can be done. So, it is a very simple technique the principle behind this or the technique behind this you are modifying your media so that you are allowing only the organism which you require and removing the organism which you does not want ok. So, the last technique under uh, primary screening method is nothing but what use of an indicator dye ok. So, the pH indicator dyes can be used uh, uh, for some screening methods for detecting the microorganisms uh, right. So, this organism I mean I, I just told that the pH indicator dyes can be also used for what uh, screening to screening for the microorganism which is having the capacity to produce mainly organic acids or amines ok. So, your media pH is 7. So, once the organism is having the capacity to produce some organic acid what will happen the pH lowers down. If it is having the capacity to produce some alkaline product the pH will go up. So, you are incorporating a particular dye over there. So, depending upon the change in the color of the dye, you will detect that uh, what type of product has been produced in the media. So, coming to the pH indicator, the pH indicator dye undergoes color changes according to the pH just now I told you such dye, dyes uh, examples of us are such dyes are neutral red, uh, bromothymol blue, so many things are there which we are using in the laboratory. And this particular dye should be added into the media, only thing is the media should be controlled in such a way that it is poorly buffered. You know that if you are completely buffered what will happen it will resist the pH. So, you should not allow for that it should be poorly buffered media ok. So, the change in the color of the dye in the vicinity of the colony that suggest a I mean the capacity of the colony to produce a particular product organic acids or amine whatever it is. Okay. So, such colonies should be subcultured to make a stock culture and further uh, uh, detection further screening methods all those things should be followed to check whether the I mean the whether the desired product is produced or not. So, this is nothing but a, a simple technique which is which can be done by using the indicator dye. Okay. So, that is all about what the primary screening technique in the next class we will be seeing. Uh, the secondary screening technique uh, and uh, what are all the techniques, um, what are all the methods which is employed in the secondary screening also. Thank you.